Hey everybody, this is Tony Canyas. Uh, I'm the Chief Motivational Officer for Insurance Nerds and I'm a Client Advisor for the Jacobson Group. And my girlfriend runs a travel blog called Wheels Travels the World. Okay, there's no hope for my hair. Uh, called wheelstravelstheworld.com. Between those three things, I end up uh, traveling a just a ton of times per year. Uh, last year, uh, I ended up taking 151 flights just on Delta and a handful of, of, of flights on other airlines. Uh, this year, I'm sitting at 91 flights according to the Delta app, uh, and I'm probably gonna end the year at, a, at about 110. I did pull back a little bit from the crazy travel of last year, so I'm gonna end up at about 110. I've already flown 143,738 miles this year thus far. So I do a lot of traveling. So if you follow, our advice at Insurance Nerds, you're eventually gonna find yourself in a job that likely requires or gives you the opportunity, depending on how you see it, of doing a lot of travel. Uh, maybe not as much as I do, maybe more, but either way, it makes sense to get good at travel. Uh, so first of all, thank you, Ray, for asking me to make this video. Uh, this one's dedicated to you, and I'll do, my, I'll do my best. And this one's probably gonna be a little bit long. So first, I, I'm gonna talk about uh, kind of uh, some key things to know if you travel uh, and then second and I might end up spending the video in two but second part I'm gonna show you my travel equipment the stuff that that goes with me wherever I go that makes my life so much easier on the road uh, so first of all first thing you need to know if, if, if you're gonna be doing a lot of travel and by a lot I mean if you're taking more than let's say 25 flights a year so if, if you're traveling, let's say, twice a month, uh, and right, if you think about it, twice a month is, is 26 times a year, and, and assuming you live in a hub, you have one flight there, one flight back, uh, you could probably make the lowest tier of status at an airline. Uh, and if you fly more than that, then you absolutely could uh, make, make the, the, at least the lowest tier uh, at an airline. Also, a uh, quick disclaimer, I'm a Delta guy. I am Delta loyal and uh, and I'll be speaking in terms of Delta, but uh, most of the things I'll tell you apply to all three major US airlines, uh, whether you're a Delta, American Airlines, or United Airlines person. So like I said, I'm a, I'm a Delta person. And, and basically, I, I do truly, truly love Delta, but ultimately choosing your airline depends on where you live and where you go a lot of the time, right? If you live in Chicago uh, or if you live in Dallas, it probably wouldn't make sense to be Delta. If you live in Houston, it wouldn't make sense to be Delta uh, because those are, those are big hubs for other airlines and not big for, for, for Delta. Um, so the first thing to know is it, it makes sense. And by the way, uh, I'm not wearing my Superman shirt today. I'm wearing this, this uh, Costa Rica Pata Caliente shirt. Pata Caliente means hot foot and uh, foot, hot foot. And uh, it's a Costa Rican saying for somebody that travels a lot. And it, I just so happened to be wearing it today. I figured it would be appropriate to go ahead and make this video today since I'm wearing the shirt. Okay. So uh, first thing to know is commit to an airline. If you're traveling more than occasionally, if you're traveling, traveling on average once or twice a month at, or more, you should commit to an airline. There are many, 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 many benefits for, from, do, from doing that. So... Um, how to choose your airline, that largely depends. Uh, the only three options really, if you live in the States, are American, uh, United, and Delta. Uh, Southwest is, is basically a major airline nowadays, but it doesn't have a lot of the benefits that, that the traditional airlines have. Uh, they don't have any first class, they don't have any lounges. Uh, I have some friends, Rob Galbraith being the main one, that, that uh, swear by Southwest, uh, but, but for the great majority of people, if you're gonna be traveling a lot, it makes sense to commit to one of the three major airlines. Okay. Um, at times, by committing to an airline, there are times where you're, where you're gonna be either paying a little more to stick to your airline compared to, to just going on any other random airline, uh, and there are times where you'll be flying with a connection when you could have gone direct or when you, uh, you'll end up flying ugly hours in, in order to, to uh, stay on, on your home airline, but ultimately it is worth it, and I'll explain why it's worth it. So no, number one, 
sticking to, to <coughs> excuse me, to committing to a single airline makes sense for your company. Even if you end up paying 50 or 100 bucks extra on, on any specific flight, chances are your company booking system uh, allows you a certain amount, somewhere between 100 and 200 bucks. Uh, so you can book any flight that, that, that is up to, up to 100 or whatever the amount is, higher than, than the cheapest logical fare. So why would it make sense for your company to pay an extra 80 bucks on, on, on any specific flight? Uh, well, what it, what it comes down to is once you have status, when stuff goes wrong, and when it comes to air travel, stuff, stuff goes wrong very often, having status makes it much easier for, uh, to, to get the airline to help you out. So uh, you'll make the meeting, basically. When, when, sto sto when, when there are delays and cancellations and, and things like that, and everybody gets gets on the on the phone or gets gets in line with with, uh, with you know to to get to get help. You can make a phone call, and depending on your status, you will get that phone call answered a lot faster than than people without status. And the airline will take care of you before they take care of people with without status. So it it truly it'll make it it'll it'll help you make sure that you can make your meetings, uh, whatever time the meetings might be. Uh, so that so by right there by not ever missing some business meetings because there was flight delays or or cancellations, uh, it it it's worth it for your company to pay the extra fifty or eighty bucks on any specific flight. And sometimes the flights will be will be cheaper in, on your airline. So it really makes sense to to commit to your specific airline. No, number two, uh, it's 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 awesome for you. Uh, the the more status you start getting you'll start getting upgrades to first class, which are really, really, really nice. You'll get to your destination much better rested and much more ready for, for the meetings. You'll be much more able to do work on the plane in first class than, 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 than otherwise. Um, also, an, another huge, uh, huge benefit of, of hitting status with the airline is there comes a point where you can get discounted or free same day standby. Uh, so, for example, myself, I've been platinum for four years and, and diamond for the last two, and uh, uh, I can just show I, I can book the last flight of the day, which is usually the cheapest, and I can just show up at the airport as soon as I'm done as, as I'm done with with meetings, and I have a ninety plus percent chance of getting on the on the next flight uh, with without cost. There's there's no change fee. In fact, I've I've actually told I've only once paid for a change fee. Uh, even though the company does allow them if, if they're justified. And, and uh, it was because I had booked the flight days before and, and uh, there was a change in plans. And, and I went to my boss and I'm like, I've never had a change fee. Uh, in order to make this meeting, I'm going to have to have a change fee. And he was okay with it. Uh, but, but basically, it'll save you a ton of money on change fees and it'll allow you to get home faster when, uh, when you're done with meetings earlier than expected. So that's a huge advantage. And getting upgraded to first class is a huge, 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 huge huge advantage um, basically how, how do you how and, and by the way I'm gonna link an old article by insurance nerds called uh, commit to an airline business travel done right uh, that, that digs into this first part a lot more uh, so how do you make status well basically at, at most major airlines it's a matter of flying 25,000 miles uh, in the year to hit your to hit your first status and you'll be surprised how easy that is. If you're flying a couple times a month, uh, once or twice a month, you're probably flying 25,000 miles and uh, you might as well uh, stick to, to, to a single airline. Uh, tip number two, for those keep track, who knows if, if it's actually tip number two, but anyway, another tip is, is by having status, you'll be able to choose a better seat without paying for a better seat. So even when you don't get those first class upgrades, you're much more likely to get economy comfort or uh, you're just much more, more likely to be able to sit closer to the front. And when it comes to, to, to air travel, there is a best seat in the plane. The best seat in every plane is 2B or 2C, because those are always either first class or economy comfort, or at the very least, they are at the very front of the plane. And the advantage of being at the very front of, of, the, of the plane is that you get to uh, get off the plane faster. So if you have that connection, uh, the further back in the plane you are, the more likely you are to miss your connection, your tight, your tight connection, because business travelers and people who travel a lot travel in the front, whether they're first class or not, 
and they know how to get in and out of the plane quickly, the further you get in the back, the more families and the more infrequent travelers you, you have, and they take exponentially longer to get out to get off the plane. So, so the difference between getting out of, of seat 2B or 2C compared to getting, getting out of, um, of seat 26E it is exponential. You end up taking so much more time to get out of seat 26E. The other thing you get for a home status is you get to board first. You get to, to be one of the first people to get on the plane, which guarantees you overhead space. Because another tip, yeah, and most people who have traveled a good amount know this, never, ever, 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 ever check a bag. You can do a two week trip without checking a bag. I've done trips to China, Hong Kong, Dubai without checking a bag. All pretty much never check a bag unless you're absolutely forced to for something out of your control. Okay, because when you check a bag, you lose flexibility, right? So, so you show up at the airport early to take advantage of your status and get home a little earlier on, on a same day standby and uh, your suitcase has already been checked in and you might get home early, your suitcase won't and your airline won't ship it home. You'll have to come to the airport to pick it up because it was your choice to take an earlier flight. So by checking your bag, you lose all flexibility. Also, you give the airline a chance to damage your bag or lose it. Uh, and you make it much more likely that things will go wrong. So, so people that, that know how to travel never, ever, ever check their bags. And so you have to learn how to pack, you have to have a proper bag. Uh, and that's all part of what we're gonna talk about he here soon. So uh, by the way, Manager Tools has a great uh, podcast on airline travel and a great episode on, how to, on, on the, the right seat on, on, our, on, on airlines. Uh, so I'll, I'll link that in the description of the, of the video. Uh, so I think I've hit kind of the main points. Oh, and another uh, important, important point, point. Hold on, I'm gonna turn my computer sound off because it, there we go, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard that, but sorry about that. Uh, another tip is your credit card matters. Depending on, on uh, which airline you fly with, you commit to, you probably want to get their credit card, okay? So me, since I fly only, only Delta, uh, my main, my everyday credit card is the, and I'm carefully covering the numbers, is the, the, the Delta, American Express Delta Sky Miles. Um, this credit card is the best for a Delta traveler. Now, depending on how much you fly, it might not make sense to have the reserve, uh, but it makes sense to have one of the Delta cards because they give you several uh, several advantages. And if you're an American Airlines traveler, you want one of the American Airlines cards. If you're a United Airlines traveler, you want one of the American Airlines card. So in, in my case, my, my Delta Reserve gets me uh, lounge access, which is amazing. And if you travel enough, it, it, it allows you to, to, to rest, it allows you to get work done, it allows you to get free food at the airport, free drinks. Uh, there are many advantages to having lounge access and when a delay happens, you will be so thankful that you have lounge access. It, it gets you a better uh, place to sit at. Uh, you can kind of leave your stuff and go to the bathroom. Uh, you don't have to be like a hawk on top of your stuff. Uh, the lounge is just a much better place to hang out. If you fly enough, you probably want lounge access. Um, the, the other thing that, that, that I get for, from, from the reserve card is the, the uh, uh, I, I get upgraded ahead of, of others with my same status that don't have the reserve card. That by itself is an absolutely huge benefit. I also get an extra free bag with, with the reserve card, but anyway, that doesn't matter since I don't really check bags ever. Okay, so that, so, so key thing to take, take away, if you're, once you're committed to an airline, it makes sense to have a, uh, a credit card from that airline. You get benefits that, that are usually worth it. Okay, uh, let's get to, to the equipment. So number one thing is my phone case. And right now my phone is actually recording this, so, so it's not in the case, but my, 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 my phone case is a, 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 uh, a what's it called uh, wallet case so it has space for three or four cards including my ID so I always have my ID and my credit card so my ID health insurance card debit card and credit card 
all of them right here on my phone. Since there's no chance I will ever leave my phone anywhere because I am so hopelessly addicted to it, there is no chance of me losing my wallet. So for somebody that's highly ADD like myself, this case is totally worth it. Number two, since I don't carry a real wallet at all and I have it for, for a year and a half, uh, I have this, this little uh, card carrier, uh, card pocket thingy, uh, in which I keep business cards, both my own and whoever, whoever's I get, and some cash, because you do need to have some cash for like tips and stuff like that, an emergency. Uh, even though I try to avoid using cash, this is, this is where I keep it. So those two things are absolutely uh, important for, for me. The other thing I always have with me is a nice pen. A nice pen. You can't show up to, to a client meeting with a big pen. And that doesn't, it doesn't have to be a $300 pen. This is like a $20 pen that will last forever. It just has to be a decent pen, not a, not a plasticky one, more a metal pen, something that you won't bite through and something that looks decent. Uh, I also carry a bullet journal, uh, but basically any sort of uh, moleskin type journal uh, looks nice. You can take it in front of a client. It helps you keep your notes organized. So it's, it's always, 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 always with me. Then in my pocket, I always carry my, my, my little uh, iPhone uh, headphones. These are the official Apple ones. Uh, they're not fantastic, but they're more than good enough to take a phone call or to listen to something uh, Definitely re re recommend the battery life's not great, but I definitely re rec recommend them or even even just uh, a decent pair of headphones basically like a pair of headphones to be able to take a phone call without having to hold the phone to to, to your ear uh, are an, 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 a nice advantage. Okay, so noise ha canceling headphones are life-changing uh, Just before starting my job at, J at Jacobson I took advantage of a Black Friday sale and I bought a pair of Bose Quiet Comforts 15 uh, that are now very beat up, but, but uh, they served me really well. Uh, my only complaints about, complaint about the Quiet Comforts 15 is that they're not Bluetooth. They're only uh, cable. And my iPhone, of course, needs an adapter in order to use this type of cable and I kept breaking the little adapters. So I ended up never using them with my iPhone, only using them in, on the plane. But either way, you want a nice pair of uh, noise canceling headphones if you're, if you're traveling a significant amount. Uh, it'll help you keep your sanity, especially if there's like loud babies on the flight or whatever, it'll help you get more work done while, while, while you're on the road. Uh, truly, a nice pair of noise canceling headphones are a lifesaver. I have just a couple weeks ago upgraded from the ones that I just showed you to this ones. These are the, the new Bose uh, noise canceling 700s. Uh, they just came out a couple months ago and a fellow CPCU, right after CPCU New Orleans showed, showed, showed them to me and they rock. They're just kind of the modern version of the QC15s. Here's the beauty of, the, of them. They're Bluetooth, but they come with a cable and you can eat, and all you need to do is plug that cable in, into the plane's uh, connection plug it into your, into your headphones and they immediately switch from your, your phone or from whatever you have them plugged into to the plane's movie system. So if you wanna relax and watch a movie for a while, same pair of headphones, amazing. Okay, so uh, the next thing that I absolutely swear by is for those that travel more than, let's say three or four times a month. If you're at the point where you're close to traveling every week, or you end up taking 50 plus flights in, in, in a year, however they end up clustered, getting the right luggage is going to be life-saving. It is going to save your sanity. Luggage becomes incredibly important when you're traveling that much. And basically there's, there's two games in town. There's Toomey or Briggs and Riley. They're very, very similar. They're much more expensive than, than your normal Target or, or Costco or, or, uh, or wherever luggage, but they, they're kind of the same, same price point as each other, but they have a few advantages. Lifetime guarantee, no questions asked. They're incredibly durable. They fit in every overhead. They're pretty much indestructible. So after doing much research, I ended up going for, for a Briggs & Riley. So this is my Briggs & Riley uh, domestic carry-on, okay? So 
Uh, let me show you why I went for this one. Number one, it has literally lifetime guarantee. You don't even have to register it. You just have to bring the pieces after it breaks and Briggs and Riley will either replace it or repair it for you. And they have locations all over the country, even in Columbus, Ohio, where I live. So even in a small city like, like Columbus. So first thing that this beautiful Briggs and Riley has is this compartment for suits. So your suit stays separated and stays in pretty good shape, doesn't get wrinkly in the suit compartment. So that is a huge advantage. Another thing, thing it has is it is expandable. So you kind of pull on the tabs and it gets literally bigger. Okay, see how it's expanded by a few inches? When it's expanded, it no longer fits in, in, the, in the overheads of small planes, but it allows you to get more stuff in the, in the case of, of, an, of an emergency. You might have to check it if it's a small plane. In its unexpanded shape, size, it fits in every overhead in the Delta fleet. I'm guessing it fits in every overhead in the domestic fleet of every airline, even the little ERJs, even, even the little mad dogs. Uh, it fits in, in the compartment of every little plane in the overhead compartment, keep saving you from having to check it. So that is a huge ad ad advantage. Then it also has this very convenient little pocket in the back for an umbrella. So if you're ADD like me and you've lost every umbrella you've ever owned, this little pocket will keep you from losing your umbrella. And this is just a $5 Walmart umbrella. I'm actually gonna be upgrading it for, for a windproof uh, umbrella. I just have not done that yet. Uh, that's the next update to the equipment. But basically having my umbrella there, wherever I am, Chicago, Boston, New York City, wherever, I wake up in the morning and it's raining, I always have an, an umbrella on me. All you need to do is check, check the weather. So that's a beautiful thing about it. Another thing about Bricks and Riley Domestic is this thing is built on the outside of the, of, of, of the suitcase. So it doesn't take space on the inside. And this is aircraft aluminum. It is indestructible, okay? Uh, and it, it has multiple, multiple places where you can lock. Uh, so if you're a little short like me, you're only 5'7", this will still be comfortable. And if you're 6'5", you can just extend it to the top and it'll still be comfortable. And it is basically indestructible. The wheels are basically indestructible. I bounce them all over the place. I bounce them on stairs all the time. They are just indestructible. It is truly amazing. The zippers are, are indestructible. And again, if it ever breaks or if the airline ever breaks it, you just take it in and lifetime they replace it for you. This thing will literally become an heirloom that you hand over to your kids. Uh, That's how amazing it is. Mine, Delta, uh, forced me to check it a few weeks ago on, on a flight I was running late. So my handle broke. Uh, in, in, uh, in in the baggage area of the plane or, or whatever. Uh, it, it, I haven't had a chance to take it in because I've been traveling so much, but basically I just need to take it into Bricks and Riley and they will replace it. They, they, they will fix that or replace the entire bag for free. Whether it's this year or 20 years from now, it is truly an amazing warranty. So anyway, this bag will help you so much. I love that bag so much. That, and again, you can go for, for either the Toomey or the uh, Bricks and Riley version. Uh, so basically, either version comes in at about 600 bucks retail. So that's about 10 times the price of a normal suitcase. And I know that seems insane, but if you fly enough, believe me, it's worth it. And it's the last bag you will ever buy. I love it so much that I ended up buying the matching backpack. Same story, basically indestructible, and uh, basically uh, lifetime guarantee. Okay, so so it helps me stay organized. It's it's a nice kind of compact shape, so so it doesn't look ridiculous because if I got a big one, I would fill it up. Uh, and normally I have two laptops: my work laptop and my, and my personal laptop. Also, I always have a big, big mobile battery. And uh, for the last about a year or so, I've been carrying this giant Anchor battery. By the way, for any sort of accessories, Anchor is, is my go-to brand. They're fantastic. They're, they're well-priced, durable, and just, very, just always work. Uh, so I have this gigantic Anchor battery that charges my phone about 10 times 
and it charges my my uh, uh, my Mac. Uh, it can it can charge my Wii, uh, not Wii, my Nintendo Switch. Uh, this thing is is just amazing. Uh, it has a quick charge port to charge my my phone very quickly. And my only complaint about this one, it's a little it's a little older model. It, this one charges by Android type uh, micro USB or my, mini USB. I think it's micro USB port. Uh, I will be upgrading it soon to, to switch for, for the version that, that, that ch uh, charges by USB-C, which charges a lot quicker. So big mobile battery, absolutely crucial you, so that you're never stranded with a dead phone, no matter, no matter what. Um, the other thing that, that I carry here is this really cool little bag. And this really cool little bag has all of my charging cables, basically, okay? So here, you, you, can, you can see, and this bag was only like 13 bucks. Uh, so here you can see I, I have a USB-C charging cable. No, no, excuse me. This is a, a lightning charging cable for, for my iPhone, USB-C charging cable, uh, a uh, Android type or, or uh, uh, whatever they're called, a, a micro USB or mini USB, I think it's micro U USB. Uh, this one is the USB-C to Lightning, the one that comes with, with, with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Uh, let's charge it faster. This one's the charger for, for my Apple Watch. And this one is a, a short USB-C. This one's the cable that turns my Bluetooth headphones into plug-in headphones. Uh, and then I have a little uh, Belkin adapter for to be able to, to connect to an HDMI uh, projector on my Mac and a uh, Logitech presentation remote. Okay, so I have absolutely everything in this bag I need to be able to charge any of my wide, wide, wide variety of electronics and to be able to, to give a presentation, which I do very, very often. And it's all organized. In a, in a in a single bag and and this uh this bottom pocket I, I i use for the bottom part of the gimbal i haven't talked about the gimbal yet but i'll talk about it towards the end because the gimbal is currently holding the camera so so can't uh really uh can't really show it show, show it yet I'll, I'll i'll add a little piece in the end where i'll show the gimbal okay and then the other pocket here in the back is just big enough to fit the headphones i'm currently wearing so basically I put the headphones away in this bag, I put this bag away, and I am kind of set between this and the anchor battery. I am set for basically anything I need uh, electronically. The other thing I, 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 I travel with some of the time, uh, if you're a gamer, uh, highly recommended. And if you're not, then no. Uh, but a Nintendo Switch, great, great way. Once, once your brain can't handle any more work, uh, the penguins are falling off, like one of my trainers, in my, one of my first insurance jobs used to say. Uh, it, uh, <coughs> the Kindle is, is, is a great uh, traveling ga gaming system. The other thing I, I carry with me is uh, my trusty portfolio. By the way, both my portfolio and the little card thingy uh, are red because I love red, but most people will go with black or a different color. Uh, they're both Letterology brands, letterology.com has some really cool stuff. So, so basically, this is a client-friendly portfolio. Happens to, I, I put my initials on it, but, but uh, basically, if, if I walk into a client meeting, I'm carrying either this portfolio or my, my little uh, uh, bullet journal or, or, or uh, moleskin and a nice pen. Uh, so that is kind of my travel setup, uh, or at least the the absolute must of my travel setup. Uh, I also have this little anchor speaker that I don't always take. I only take it kind of on trips where, where I think that I'll have significant hotel time. Um, this little anchor speaker uh, is about 20 bucks. It, it, it charges in just a few hours and it gives you like 20 or 30 hours worth of, worth of pretty decent audio. Uh, so when you get tired of the, of the headphones, you're in the hotel and you're, you know, watching a movie, watching videos or, or, or whatever, you just want music or, or whatever. I, I do a lot of audiobooks and podcasts. Uh, this little guy uh, is absolutely fantastic once the headphones are hurting my ears, basically. Uh, so I think that I've hit 
pretty much everything in my in my kind of my loadout for for travel. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot more about travel that, that I'll think about later and I'll end up writing articles or posting more videos. Uh, and this video is about half an hour already. But this is the basic uh, overall setup that, 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 that I travel with as of fall 2019. And uh, you don't need all of this, all, all, of, all this stuff, uh, if you don't travel as much. But if you do travel a lot, slowly, adding some of this stuff is going to make your life so much easier. And, and basically the, the whole idea is how do we make life on the road for us road war warriors less painful? And, and the smarter we can be about that, uh, the, the, the more effective and if uh, more effective we'll be while we're on the road, the, the more we'll be able to, to get work done while we're on the road. Uh, and it, it is becoming more and more important uh, as, as more and more jobs are remote or have a, tra a traveling component. So anyway, that's all I have for now. I will go ahead and add another like 10 seconds to the end of this video uh, to show you my, uh, my little gimbal that I use for, for video recording. Hey, it's Tony again. Uh, I've taken my phone off of the uh, gimbal so I can show it to you. Basically, this is my little gimbal, and this is really not needed for for uh, for most business travelers. Only if you have some sort of, of video or content creation, like I do. Uh, basically, it allows you to keep your phone stable while you walk around taking video, uh, and it folds up really nicely into a very simple shape. And, and this this happens to be the the uh, the DJI Osmo Three. Uh, I just got it when I got my new iPhone 11 Pro and uh, it has this little attachment at the, at the bottom that makes a tripod. So basically you just screw it into the bottom and now you have a gimbal with a tripod. That's what I use to hold my phone for video conference calls uh, or for recording videos like the one I just recorded. So anyway, it's a, it's a nice little addition uh, if you do uh, content creation, especially video uh, as part of, of your travel. So anyway, this is Tony with Insurance Nerds and the Jacobson Group, and uh, this is my uh, this is how I travel. Hey, I just realized that I forgot one last uh, device that that is part of of, of, of my travel. Uh, this little anchor charger, uh, and I'll post what the exact model is. But ba basically, this is the charger to charge them all. It comes with four USB traditional USB 2 or uh, or USB 3, well, the traditional USB A. You, uh, it comes with two, with, with, with four USB A spots uh, and one USB C. So this beauty, you only need a single plug in the hotel room and you can get pretty much all of your electronics charged. Four things that use U, U, USB a and even your Mac or or uh, your uh, uh, switch that uses USB C. So this is the incredible one charger to charge them all. Carry this beauty around, and you don't have to carry a whole bunch of chargers. I've literally stopped carrying every other charger except for that one.